Ladies and gentlemen, today we have a piece of art. A Michael Saiki MA505. This is one of a better made Tornham ever. Is the oh, the finishing is so oh, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Look at this. It's bloody heavy. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. this is a very popular. Well, popular was bloody expensive in in seventy eight. Is when it bloody it was came out in Japan. Uh, very little, very hard to find this here in the UK. Probably because of the price and the competition of British tournaments that were sensibly more, sensibly cheaper. But this is incredible. Uh, it's quite complicated, we will work on this today. And what we are going to do, the customer here has a request. He wants to eliminate this hemmed in connector. And have a wiring that comes from the head show all the way to the RCA connectors. For this purpose, I made a special cable. Uh, now we try to. All right, here. Focus, please. Uh, all right. Here, yeah, this uh, garment is like the same dimension of a Mamdine connector with a slot that can be secured to the tornum together like exactly like the Mamdine 5 pin connector so we have to take down take apart this tornum uh, and do all the rewire this time is particularly complicated not only because of all these mechanisms, there is a beautiful uh, vertical tracking adjustment here. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my. Fantastic. But more, most of all, because of this dynamic vertical tracking force. Uh, I'm not a great fan of this fun of this uh, system. Uh, how it works? Uh, you use static. Uh, you balance statically uh, of zero your cartridge with this weight, and then you set the tracking force with this knob. There is a coil inside here. What's the reason of this? Uh, in theory. When you have a warped to uh, warp record, uh, the tracking force will change uh, depending the angle of a toner increasingly when uh, the warp is up and less when the warp is down. In theory, should be give you some benefits in listening to very warped records. In practice, uh, I'm not really sure, this is my personal opinion, because there are people can swear of their mother or the family kids that this is a fantastic sounding tone, and probably is. Uh, the problem is that, uh, like in other, I, I found in uh, other tonums they had this kind of system, some kind of ringing when this, uh, these coils start to operate. But nevertheless, the, the, this tone is really a piece of art. So let's get it started and in a moment we will remove all what is not necessary, all this part, because we need to reach to the Amdin connector. Alright, well, let's start to take down whatever we can. I never worked on, on this on, on, on the Michael Seiki MA505, so uh, bear with me. Uh, this tornum is full of high precision skews, so if you don't have precision skew divers, don't even try to start 
So now the easy part, we remove this locking knot here. Alright, and we have to take down this part. Hmm. Let's see how we can do it. There are a few skews here. Lose the skews. One and two. All right. And this is VTA adjustment mechanism. Now it's get together with the skews. Lovely. And I see that we have still some work to do because the MDIN is under this metal sleeve and it is connected with oh my my with all the vertical tracking force thing. All right, try to go further. Where is this skew here? Another is here. Let's see. A big one, huh? Take, take away the counter away. We don't need this. Yes. It's a big skew behind here. We don't remove the skews, we just loosen them. Uh, this is a brass skew, is quite delicate. Yes, all right. Just loosening it a bit. I feel that this is losing a bit and take away this as well. Hmm. I guess that we have to take down the vertical tracking force which is here together with the arm lift. All right. Finger cost. Right, one, two, Now we see we have a problem. We have to remove the vertical tracking force pillar. It's not coming. Let's start the bit. What we can do, I see in a second. All right, we found something. Uh, loosening these four skews, they, there is a holder here that is holding the MD in, but the wiring is too short. We should try to remove these to access the wiring. Oh, right, uh, we managed to remove it vertical attacking force. When you work on, on Japanese tonos, you might find 
a lot of parts are glued together and screwed down. And this was the case, as you can see, the glue here, this came out all right. This is a part, and now slowly we take away the the armrest Right, we step down almost everything. Now we try to get this out completely. Armrest slid off. I've unfastened these four grab screws and uh, Ta da! Here we go. Here is the horizontal bearing. And here we have our MD connector. Now we have to replace the MD connector with this one. Driver wires all in till the head show. Easy to say, not so easy to do. We have to check where the grounds are. And a uh, good fun, isn't it? We have now to study very carefully this sequence to install this cable. Because I can see here this is pretty narrow. We have to slide this inside the cable because otherwise we won't be able to pass this through. I right, see. Ah. And then go both inside. So first we slide in this sleeve. And only after we have to connect this here. I will now uh, solder a draw wire to this new wiring and I will desolder these wires from here. Bearing in mind there are two grounds here. The grounds must be stay intact. All right then, uh, we have now put in place our cable. I had to replace the screw here with a shorter one. The next step is to go through the cable, salt to the hair shell, mount back everything, a prayer. Everything is alright because it is quite complex and delicate. Torn up. We solder a draw wire to the existing wires. What we have to be very careful when we pull all these bunch of wires that they don't pull inside the ground wire. We, we don't know where these ground wires are connected and if get broken it can be a nightmare to disassemble everything and looking for to restore the, the grounding. Uh, while removing the insulation of these wires, you, I can see why the customer wants a new wiring. These wirings are oxided. It doesn't matter how, how good look the wire after 40, 50 years the copper inside gets oxided 
and is very 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 fragile so if you have a 50, 40 50 years old tonum uh, a good idea is to replace the copper wise now we have to remove the hash shell first we try removing this key There is a color here, I never saw it before in other tonums, I don't know why. Uh, and this here. This here seems that it, it is set. Yes. It's, it's, it's like on SME tonums for two regulate the azimuth. This collar keep the socket in place and you can regulate it slightly. So I mean, this screw must go completely. And we can now pull out very slowly and we drive we pull and drive pull and drive hoping that nothing snaps if it does we have to remove the two bearing here and take the arm tip out of the yoke Oh, okay, as much is slow. Pulling the old wires, it tangled in with the ground. They snapped and had to remove the arm tip from the yoke here. How you do this operation? It is quite simple. With a tool like this, you unlock the locking nut both sides and with a screwdriver proper side you unlock you ask here these guides and here are the vertical bearing I, I put some tape just to avoid the misfortune and these balls to start to run wild everywhere okay now i remove the wires here is the ground is a two-part ground one part of the ground is soldering inside here another part of the ground it goes here inside here with a clip all right now we put the draw wire through this through this and we pull the new wires in. This tonum is testing my sanity. Alright, uh, apologies, uh, I, mean, we, we, I skipped uh, a phase of the assembly because I was not expecting that I had to remove this part of the arm tube. You see this for small skews has to be uh, unfastened because inside his arm tube there is a rubber grommet with a very small hole so it's, it is not really feasible to put a draw wire here and have it exit there or vice versa you have to unscrew these four skews pull the the um, arm tube out pass the, the 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 wire and put the arm tube back and, and close back all these things so it is uh, unnecessarily complicated probably the solution was to uh, uh, reduce um, resonances from the arm tube to the counterweight because this assembly is quite stiff all right, uh, what's the situation now? 
we have the wires coming through. Uh, next step, I have to uh, put the the uh, the arm tube back on the yoke and uh, and uh, uh, regulate the vertical bearing. Done this, we can finally uh, solder the ground to the new cable and start the assembly or everything back and of course we will have to solder the uh, Asher connector to the new wiring. So it is uh, how to uh, take out this tape and what we have to do is pull gently all the wires put back this in and with the patience of the monk regulate these two bearing inside here I will not show this because I will have my head on this you will see nothing uh, see you later when this is done. Uh, how actually you regulate these bearings? <coughs> these are these conical pins that have to go exactly in the middle of, of the bearings. And you have to tighten both of them of this or with a screwdriver keeping the arm tip in the middle and find what I call the sweet point. The sweet point is when you feel no play in the bearing twisting the arm tube left and right When you feel no, uh, that point between uh, that if you scale just a little bit and there is a play, you tighten a little bit less until there is no play, but if you just tighten a little bit, untighten a little bit, is the play start. And that is the sweet point where the bearing will not offer any any resistance because the two conical insert will not push too much the, the balls and uh, and the bearing is tight keep testing if you feel any play just a very tiny bit I think this is the right place, right moment. There's no play. Now, you take a tool like this, you lock the locking nut, you lock the screw and you block all right this is blocked and you do the same the other side Uh, there is a little play we have to correct and so on so on with the with the patient of the monk you set your bearing see you a little later 
Okay, we sold the back the now we put back the this sleeve tiny screwdriver even tiny And here goes our cable. All right. Now we start to reassemble part of the torn up and we will solder the wise okay the word of the vice when you solder these air shell connectors these air shell connectors are extremely delicate doesn't matter which brand, SMA or Technics, uh, all of them. And why soldering on the soldering wheel wires? You might overeat the plastic and destroy the connector. To avoid to make a disaster, first you have to work very fast and secondly I, I hardly recommend to put an old air show inside the, with a connector. This will allow the part of the heat that you put on these pins will be transferred on this block and will give you more tolerance, less chances that you melt something. Nevertheless, you have to be extremely careful, extremely fast. I recommend to use a very hot soldering iron, more than 400 degree, extremely clean, and work fast. The first things we have to do is to clean from the old wires take a clean put a little drop of solder and clean the pin Practice makes perfect. I did a hundred of times. But if you're not sure, practice on a on an old connector, you can buy some garbage somewhere. Alright, well the one is still a little bit not too okay. <coughs> Once this is done. We have to prepare other wires. The first thing we have to do is to thin the new wires. These are 
leads wires with a silk insulation. To thin this kind of wires you need to have a very hot and clean soldering iron because you have to burn not only the silk but also the paint which insulates each stand of a lit wire. A lit wire is a normal uh, copper wire with multi strand but each strand is insulated with, between each other. We use a spe special paint, like in, on transformers. And this paint must be burned. If you don't burn the paint, the wire will not thin. You see, it's thinned when you see the thin on it, very bright. It will drop. On solder. Here we go. Now with a multimeter we will check which wire is which because they are not marked, they are all white. We we'll check each one is, is going where. I'm back in, a, in just a second. We are ready to solder the wires. The, 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 all the wires are marked, color coded. When you test a wiring, or the toner, especially the toner. Uh, check the continuity is not enough. You have to check also if the resistance of every wire is the same and below certain values. For these uh, cables I know that is a good value if it is below one and a half ohms. Uh, because you cannot uh, exclude that somewhere there is uh, a cold soldering point that might uh, show positive in a continuity test but will not be uh, a good conductor in for uh, the, the signals of, uh, of, of a cartridge. Work fast with pre-tinted elements uh, here there is too little solder yeah. all right one by one take your time because you work too fast you might regret it see you next a few minutes from now. Once everything is connected, check again if everything is all right. I start with the red. Right. Green. Good. Blue. blue. Here you are. 
and last and not least the white we did everything correctly now it's time to reassemble everything back all right done uh, this stone uh, tested my resilience really oh here's the beauty now it is completely upgraded a new wiring and all in a piece steel connectors my client will be very much pleased with it so thank you for watching if you want my ad a piece of advice and if you have a turn on like this <coughs> don't do it at home this is uh, it's a difficult piece of, of, of gear to, to manage give it to a professional that can do properly because there are there are surprises at every step of this of this uh, work on this tone up thank you for watching if you like this kind of content uh, okay subscribe like etc 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 and see you next time